This isn't the real Piccadilly Circus. None of this is real. Come to think of it, I'm not even real. This is a virtual version of me reporting from inside a video game. Ah, London. Had a good run there for a while. Watchdogs Legion imagines a dystopian vision of a post-Brexit Britain, a surveillance state governed by an oppressive regime. The player assumes the role of an activist and hacker who must recruit in-game characters to their cause and ultimately bring down the government. We need to recruit a resistance. Legion's the third instalment in the popular franchise, developed by video games company Ubisoft in its Toronto studio. We're taking a lot of just influence from what we see in the world. Uh, whether it's the current political climate, whether it's emerging technology, we find ways that uh, we are inspired by those things, uh, ways that we're maybe a little bit afraid of these things, and then we extrapolate out. A large area of London has been mapped for the game, and every character that you meet is playable, their backstory and personality, as well as characteristics, filled in by the game's artificial intelligence when the player approaches them. Any character that you see in the world, they're kind of, um, I guess they're kind of like a level of dumbness, right? And then as you're paying attention to the characters, they get smarter. As you're profiling them and as you're getting more interested in them and as you decide to recruit them, we layer in more complexity into the character, but we always keep it consistent with what you initially saw. Technically interesting innovations, but is it asking for trouble using real world events like Brexit in a game? The British people have spoken and the answer is, we're out. I want to put that to the game's creative director, Clint Hocking, but for this interview, we're going to attempt something which has never been done before. I'm going to perform an interview with a developer of a game inside their own video game. In order for my 3D model to be created, they're going to need a whole bunch of images of me, which is what's going to happen in here. To do this, every minute detail of my face and body needs to be scanned so I can appear as a game character. And three, two, one. That was great. It's not like the photo me booth at the railway station. Yeah. Real big. <laughs> Sorry. It's incredible how little we use our face like that, right? Next, it's on with the performance capture suit, marker dots painted onto my face, and I'm fitted with a head rig which captures my facial movements. Mm -hmm. Now, be honest with me. How do I look? Is someone going to call action for us, or are we just going to go? Now we're ready for virtual lights, camera, and action. Clint, um, why did you set this game in London? Well, you know, Mark, I think London is an incredible city to set a video game in. It's not just full of, of culture and historic landmarks and all kinds of amazing places that people want to go to and visit. It's also an incredible city full of cultural diversity. It was really important for us to be able to make sure we were simulating not just the city and everything that's going on that you see around you, but also the population and her people. Brexit has been hugely divisive in the UK and quite a lot of people are going to be quite angry that it's been included in a video game. Well, I look at it as a creator of culture. If we were creating films or, or movies or books, it's the same with video games, you know? It's our, it's our responsibility to look at the things that are happening in the world around us and, and have something to say about that, to create something that's meaningful and that people can look at and engage with and that speaks to the world that they live in. This game's been in development for four years and global events move very, very quickly indeed. Have you included any, any more of those events in the game itself? Well, Mark, things are changing around us all the time and every day we have to look at what's happening in the world and make decisions about what we're going to be able to include in our simulation. We look at, you know, regulations for drones flying in the skies or autonomous vehicles in traffic and we have to think, are these things that we want to include in our simulation and make playable for, for players in our, in our game universe? So it's something we think about a great deal. Clint Hawking, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. This is Mark Chislak for BBC News in a virtual version of London.